Hello and welcome to the TTI Distribution Download, the podcast where we talk about all things happening in the world of electronic components with the specialists of TTI. And now, your host for the TTI Distribution Download, Paula Renfro. Hey everybody, thanks for plugging in to the TTI Distribution Download today. Got a special treat. We're always excited to have Gabe Osorio in the house. He actually comes in and, and spends some time with us in the sound booth. Thanks for coming, Gabe. Yeah, glad to be here. Thanks it, for having me. It's yeah. always so much fun. It's right? great to see you. Yeah. Um, for those of you who haven't met, haven't heard Gabe yet, it's Gabe Osorio. He is TTI's Director of Marketing in our Transportation Business Unit. And he just loves, you're going to hear it in his voice, you've heard it before, he loves what he does, he loves this market, he loves technology. So let's Let's kind of go back and pick up a little bit of where we left off um, before. And I'll tell you, honestly, this is is really present on my mind right now. And I'm just going to say range anxiety because yep. my husband has decided he would like a fully electric vehicle. Exciting. It's like, well, good for you that Gabe's coming in next week and then we'll <laughs> decide. So tell us Perfect. a little bit about the, um, the the state of EV, the charging infrastructure and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So there's obviously a lot going on and I'm sure... Uh, if you're in the market for an EV or e- any car, right, it's it's big topic of conversation right now. So it certainly is uh, the infrastructure that's available for, for charging that car because uh, it can be a big part of that, right? Um, and there's a lot of interesting things taking place. You know, last time I think we talked a little bit about the standardization taking place mm-hmm. with infrastructure, mm-hmm. specifically – the interface for charging, so the NACS or NOx or however uh, you want to pronounce yeah. it. Um, but you know, I read a really uh, a really good article recently in The Verge uh, that was drawing comparisons to the cell phone market, and specifically Apple uh, and their recent change, uh, forced or not, to get rid of the Lightning charger and move yeah. to a standard USB-C uh, port mm-hmm. that uh, is much more widely available and easier to use and, uh, you know, a, a standard that's uh, more broadly accepted, right? Than, than right, so you will cable. only need the one cord for all of our guests and all of our phones. Same thing potentially for yep. cars, exactly. right? We'll only need the one connector for that's however right. many cars. Yeah, cool. that's right. So most of the major North American automotive uh, makers are moving to the NACS standard, uh, which will open up, hopefully, much more charging infrastructure, uh, tapping into that uh, Tesla supercharger and charging infrastructure system that's already in place uh, that really, truly leads the way from an availability standpoint, uh, number of charging stations, uh, the units, uh, the power that's available for them from high-speed charging for those superchargers. Uh, so really is a good thing uh, when we can get to a point where we're standardizing, uh, uh, you know, a, an interface for charging and we're not having competing chargers and just making it more difficult to add to the infrastructure network. Um, is this going to make our, our evolution generally, is this going to speed that up? I think so. I think it will. I think that coupled with more investment and um, uh, certainly more push from uh, government investment, municipality investment, that kind of thing, will definitely help grow infrastructure availability faster. Certainly uh, one of the biggest probably holdups there is if you think about it, you know, it's, I'll, I'll say relatively easy to go out and build a charger box, right, or a stand-up okay. box. Okay. But think about the grid to get the power to those boxes. Those move slower. So, you know, getting the infrastructure in place to get those power not, to those. They're not privately run. No. And right. they will move very methodically and very specifically. Uh, and that will probably hold up uh, or, or be one of the biggest gating factors, I think, in just rapid expansion is just getting grid networks to support those infrastructures, especially along, think, freeways. If you're driving mm-hmm. across the country mm-hmm. out in the middle of nowhere, trying to find all the power that's needed for those stations. Getting the power to the receptacle. Exactly. Um, does this mean anything to our listeners, to the particularly the design engineer, this, this decision mm-hmm. 
um, and just generally? I think so. Absolutely. It helps, again, from a standardization standpoint, you're reducing the amount of options available uh, for that interface. So it helps standardize components across the board from, you know, the actual plug that plugs into your car and the inlet receiving the plug Mm -hmm. to the components that are going to be used inside of both the onboard charger, the uh, charging station itself. So all of it helps standardize and help uh, really with the supply chain of those components and making them more readily available. Because now we know which products are needed uh, to, to a better right, degree. Right, right. Yeah. Um, are we going to be able to supply those? Is yeah. there going to be a supply chain issue in terms of now everybody's going to want the same thing, it's a good thing, but, but how do the manufacturers look? That's a great question. I don't think we're going to run into supply chain yet. I think that it's still pretty new, and the good news here is that many manufacturers are wanting to obviously enter that market and are coming out with options uh, very quickly. And so by the end of this year, we'll see excuse me, many different options available, uh, for example, just for the charger inlet and mm-hmm. coupler itself. Uh, and, and by options, do you mean a variety of manufacturers? Yes, okay. yeah, precisely. Okay. Yep. So uh, an availability will increase and in, in production, again, because of uh, government investment right? Mm-hmm. that's out there, mm-hmm. um, making sure that those are manufactured locally, and by locally in the United uh, States, or right. at least within right. NAFTA, within, okay. will help with that supply chain as well, too. So it'll be much more... Right. Um, easier to get source uh, and know where it's coming from, avoid tariffs, all those so kinds of things. So conversely, um, there will be some of those connectors going end of life? Um, no, I okay. don't think so. I okay. think, uh, so the other prevalent standard out there obviously is CCS type one, at least in North America. Uh, and where the market seems to be headed is NACS for automotive and passenger vehicle and uh, CCS one remaining with your commercial vehicle off-road type charging systems to a certain degree uh think uh, class four through six for commercial vehicles so kind of your box delivery trucks your last mile delivery trucks your amazon trucks right those kind of things yeah yeah they're kind of perfect for that ccs one they they don't need to necessarily fast charge in an hour uh, because they go return to a site and can plug in and charge overnight um, and the CCS1 seems to deliver that standard and um, uh, is a good option for that class of vehicle. And then bigger trucks and uh, larger equipment, uh, think mining equipment or class 8 trucks, uh, over, over uh, long haul trucks, that mm-hmm. kind of thing, mm-hmm. are going to move to a standard called MCS or mega char- megawatt charging, okay. uh, which so sounds kind of futuristic yeah, and it crazy. Yeah, I was going to say, this sounds new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is relatively new. Uh, again, like NACS, there will be options available uh, from manufacturers uh, mid to late this year, probably in mm-hmm. 2024. Uh, but it looks very futuristic. It's a kind of triangle-shaped charger that's about the size of my head. It's, yeah, <laughs> I it, wondered it, if you were going to go there. Yeah, it's I amazing. It's a big one. Okay. Yeah, but that'll be at, you know, think more truck yards. Big, and yeah. yeah, exactly, where the infrastructure needed for that is serious uh, for the power that it takes to charge those. Yeah, the and power they're going to have to bring to exactly. the truck yard, et cetera. Yep. Yeah, right. but it's exciting. So there are options coming exciting. for those as well, too. So kind of three developing standards based on the size of vehicle or type of vehicle that we're talking about is kind of what it's shaking out to be like. So that's that for uh, the current state of EV charging. What else? What else should I be asking you about today? Where do you see the market heading as we move through 2024? And and how about into the second half of this decade? Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, I mentioned one of the things. I I had a conversation with uh, the president of a high-voltage cable assembly company recently um, just regarding the expansion of the network. And I kind of alluded to it. Uh, you know, a minute ago, uh, the need for the infrastructure build out from the grid perspective, meaning getting power Mm -hmm. to the infrastructure sites. It's it's quickly becoming evident that that's going to be the biggest driver for how fast we can proliferate uh, charging infrastructure. And really specifically, uh, going back to the highway example, getting it out to remote areas Mm -hmm. where uh, a consumer, a driver, could Mm -hmm. go from Texas to Iowa and thinking of big open expanses of terrain and not having, you know, that box limited of gas stations. Box carry is yeah. not going to do you any good if it doesn't have power yet. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So tr- how do we get that, you know, satisfied? And I think once they can figure out to incentivize 
you know, these utility companies to help support okay. this quicker. Um, that will help expand um, the infrastructure network much quicker. So lots of conversation taking place at uh, these types of companies, EV charging companies, uh, the charging manufacturers, I should say, on uh, how do we turn that government investment into more push to the utilities to help them speed up that process. Again, it's a very methodical right. process, right, that has to be thought out, planned out, uh, investment made, in unfortunately, or fortunately, the investment into grid infrastructure is significantly more expensive than obviously uh, that last mile stretch of getting power to a charging box. So, building substations and you know the distribution network for power, um, you can imagine, would take some time. So, it'll be. Um, and, and this is this is not a, an entirely new industry but this is a new hit industry that just sure. this piece of it yeah. right just this piece of it if we want to add training mm -hmm. right headcount personnel mm -hmm. issues challenges yeah at least yeah for sure yeah without a doubt right i mean that's it's a developing uh you know technology uh developing professions a hundred percent yeah you you need to put training into uh being able to to offer the manpower available, right, mm -hmm. to be able to, or the labor, right, to be able right. to build the network and uh, expand it out. Uh, so certainly a training uh, resource. Uh, really what it comes down to is a lot of resources. Yeah, it's <laughs> a lot of resources, right, right. Yeah. right ultimately. From, from not only dollars but time, uh, personnel, um, and technology uh, that really have to all come together in a, in a perfect storm to help rapid expansion, right? And that's usually the key word that everybody's looking for is that rapid expansion. It's very funny talking to, you know, friends, colleagues, uh, you know, we had a conversation obviously about your husband looking for a car and just mm -hmm. understanding the different varying opinions of where people are today on their acceptance of electric vehicles, right? Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, it's clear to see that range anxiety still exists, even though the network that exists today would most likely support just about everybody's needs, right? right? Especially for a city commuter. Especially for the commuter, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. You know, you're not going to use a full battery charge to go back and forth from, from the office in one day. Right. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, if you're living in a condo or you live in an apartment mm -hmm. or you live in a high rise or whatever that might look like, charging could be a big factor. Um, another anecdote here, we traveled recently in, in Montreal and mm -hmm. Uh, our Uber driver uh, owned a condo in downtown and had to go to a gas station around the corner where there was a charger to be able to plug in his car. So mm -hmm. he was telling us how he would manage his schedule and time to fit in that full charge of, uh, you know, co or the commitment to get to that 80% charge that he was looking for on a regular basis. So Right, and, and hope it was available yeah. when he had allotted the time in his schedule to have that done. Those it, things cross my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you don't have the ability to plug in at home, bringing that into the equation is is uh, an interesting thing to think about, right? Mm -hmm. But again, I think the biggest takeaway there is that the, the, the market is evolving quickly. Mm -hmm. And even if we see current state EV, I'll say challenges from uh, uh, a growth perspective mm -hmm. right now, you know, we're selling less EVs this year than we were last year, right. or at least it feels that way. Um, is that not true? I thought. It's I mean, not. It's, uh, okay, good. <laughs> it's not uh, well, really. I say yeah. good. Yes, of course, good evolution. Yeah, good for humanity. That sort of a thing. But it, there's a lot in the news at this there moment. There is. Yeah, and and I think part of that is, um, yes, there's some pullback. Um, you know, you're seeing Teslas get discounted and right. different uh, EV. You know, Rivian has discounted their vehicles. That's a good thing in my perspective. Mm -hmm. You need a, a more affordable option. To be able to uh, to to affect mass adoption, uh, other yeah. countries certainly have. Yeah, them. absolutely. Yeah. Look at China, right? There's right. A very affordable EV manufacturers there, heavily subsidized, and a few other things. But the adoption rate is much faster, much quicker, with an affordability uh, price tag uh, kind of attached to it. So, I think that's a good thing here, and I think we will see more EVs sold in 2024 than we've ever sold uh, in the marketplace. Um, but even if it doesn't necessarily feel that way. So we're growing, and this EV market is still going to continue to grow, um, but it just may be that the commercial vehicle or last-mile delivery ends up being the one that is the faster that growth. That gets out in yeah, front. Yeah. yeah, and that's okay because that's probably a market that's much more ripe for it, uh, at least for rapid growth. Right, yeah. and it's all still 
it's all still a good thing. That's right. Yeah. Um, all spells opportunity. So this this <laughs> reminds me. I read this last year, but we didn't get a chance to um, chat about it. It was late last year, um, but it's a little the a little what came to mind was like a little bit of uh, a leapfrog of this whole infrastructure thing. It was on solar powered cars. Yeah. Is that a thing? Yeah. Okay. Well, what, so, so I love why, that question. So why not? <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. I think that's such a good question. Um, believe it or not, there are startups out there that are looking to. You know, I, I don't know that we'll get to the point where solar power is uh, replacing physical charging okay. uh, or at least plugging into a network somehow for charging. But certainly, I think there are startups out there that are developing technology to augment your battery power or at least uh, help prolong your battery range. Uh, or maybe powering accessories in your vehicle. So if you have a sedan of some sort, solar power could power your air conditioning unit or your infotainment system or whatever that might look like to help, again, extend the mm-hmm. range on your battery. I think we're still a ways away from a fully, uh, uh, you know, a full solar-powered yeah. uh, vehicle uh, like that. But again, Have you seen one? Uh, I've seen renderings. Yeah, I've never, okay, yeah, I've right. never seen one right. actually in person or anything like that yet. But what I have seen is in, on the commercial vehicle side, think of a trailer. Uh, so not the cab, but the actual trailer portion. Mm-hmm. There's a ton of surface area on top of that trailer. Oh, right. So for commercial vehicles, mainly, again, long haul uh, an trucks. Ele- an electric commercial vehicle. Yeah, right? but that, right? that space that's available on the trailer, using that to harness solar power, putting batteries on the trailer, and then using the batteries to actually power motors in the trailer itself on the wheel base uh, or on the axles on the trailer to help further prolong the battery of the uh, of the cab itself so that's actually that's probably first oh that's actually that's actually happening now yeah there's companies out on the west coast that are developing that technology actively today um, so you'll, you know, we might be a, maybe six months to a year away from seeing some of those start to hit the road in earnest, um, you know, maybe in pro- prototype phase yeah. initially, but certainly doing the testing to see what that might look like for, again, mass adoption. It would be the end them. of the, the moonroof <laughs> or the convertible. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't have a convertible anymore. I, but. I'm not sure I'm there, but, but, yeah, that would be but fun. it certainly could be. And again, I think commercial vehicle is where that's going to probably lead the way right. and then you'll find applications quickly for uh, passenger vehicles that that will come right. to light from that right. yeah once they harness that technology so speaking of commercial vehicles yeah um let's talk about those but how about let's talk about those in the next episode sounds great Does that sound good that sounds okay, fantastic you can stick around absolutely okay good good so thanks to our listeners today for plugging in and if you learned something today, then you're going to want to listen to other podcasts that we have with Gabe. And, of course, we'll have Gabe more podcasts in the future. And take a look at uh, Gabe's posts on, on same topics on tti.com forward slash market eye. Thank you, Paul. That's it for this episode of the TTI Distribution Download. For more information on any of the topics you heard about today, reach out to your nearby TTI branch at 1-800-CALL-TTI or visit us online at tti.com.